Hi, my name is Chris and I'm an art instructor and today we're going to be using some acrylic paint to paint a, a lovely beach on the ocean and um, a pink flamingo. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started. We're doing the flamingo this time and um, he is called the Fabulous Flamingo. Um, there's a couple ways to get your flamingo onto your paper. So um, you can start out by tracing him on there one of the things that we're going to be doing is that we're going to be putting, we're just going to be brushing across and putting the sand and the water in the sky down first and then we're going to go ahead and lay over top of, um, over those, the flamingo. So you can go ahead and trace it ahead of time. Just be prepared that when you start painting you want to go completely across him because it, it will be noticeable if you break your brush stroke when you're going across with um, with a paint across. If, if you paint across and then you stop and you try to kind of fill it in and then you try to jump over and paint the rest of it on the other side, it's going to be very noticeable. So I'm going to go ahead and trace this for the moment just so you can see how it looks as I go. And um, I'm also going to show you another way that you can get the flamingo on there without tracing it. Um, so we've cut these guys out ahead of time and it's just a simple flamingo. It doesn't need to be neat because it's all going to be covered up by paint afterwards anyways. Okay. Okay, so now here are some of the main colors we're going to be using. I forgot to add in their cream color. It's a little off-white. And um, you do not have to use these exact same colors that I'm using. You can use whatever colors you want. There is going to be a flower over on this side and some grass over here. And you can go ahead and if you, if you decide you want something different, that's totally fine. There are specific names for these under a certain uh, different brands they will have different names so um, you're just going to be using like a darker green and a lighter mint green um, I have a cream color up here and I have some white over to the side of me I'm running out of room here on my palette um, and so we're just going to go ahead and start um, if you are picking out the paint yourself at home um, that is totally fine. You just pick the colors that you think go together well. And uh, But if you want to go by one of the kits that I have, I will include the paints in your kit. And so you'll have them all right there and won't have to worry about the names that you're dealing with. So the first thing that we're going to do is about a third of the way up on our canvas. So right about here, we're going to paint our sand. And the way that we do that is we are going to start with a flat brush. You can see that the flat brush has a straight edge across it right there. And um, I have one of the bigger ones. One of my bigger ones. It covers the area better. I don't need to be precise at this point in time. And my friend Lena is here joining me. You can say, you want to say hi? Hello. Hello. So we're going to start with our cream right here. And anywhere about a third of the way up. Just go ahead and start painting even brush strokes across there. I'm just going to go ahead and swipe this right across. Um, I think probably most people watching this are love the beach. I love the beach. You love the beach? I love the beach. And um, love it. my family's been going to the beach since I was in fourth grade. Every summer we would go. And I'm just going to grab just a tiny bit of that yellow and just kind of pull that through there. So am just I covering up everything? You're going to be going over everything. You don't necessarily need to paint it so dark that you can't see anything anymore. Oh, okay. Um, your, your flamingo is going to get a little covered up here and that's okay. If you want to do the brush strokes like this and try to avoid covering that up, you can. But partway through this, I'm going to show you how you can um, just go ahead and lay your flamingo down again and just paint, like, just trace it as you're painting. Okay. 
so it'll be able to work out just fine. Sand is always different colors depending on what beach you go to. Um, the beaches on along the Bermuda Island are pink. And I love that. It's from the pink coral. Okay, so now we have our sand on there. And I'm going to go ahead and rinse off my brush. And then the water is not going to be just a solid blue when we do our water. Because, of course, when you get closer to the shore, um, the water actually looks lighter. And a lot of times it looks a little bit green. So, what we're going to do is we're going to do our, our water up here. It's, it's also going to be maybe about another, the second third up, two thirds up right here. And we're going to start with, um, let's see, a little bit of our light blue here. And so we're, yep, go right ahead. Take my paint, Lena. It's <laughs> all yours. Did I forget to give you some? I think my, I think it's, I can have some over there. Let's see on that plate. Here's another kind of Okay. I'm going to be mixing a couple different blues together on here. Um, because, like I said, you don't see all one type of blue in there. As you get close to the, the beach, it's going to get a little lighter, sometimes a little more, more green. We're going to put some of our, our mint green paint down here at the bottom. It's so fun just doing heat, these big, broad strokes. strokes. It just goes faster than that. Yes. So. Right along the beach, I'm putting my mint green. And then I'm also, right after that, I'm putting um, this, let's see, this aqua blue right here. And one of the things is that this is painted with acrylic paint. And acrylic paint dries fairly quick. And so all of this here at the beginning is going to be quick because you're actually blending the colors together. And if it seems like your colors are starting to get dry, you it's always okay to just grab a little bit of water, and that'll help a lot of that color blend it a little bit better together. I'm gonna add some more of this aqua blue up in here. This one right here. I think we're gonna have to add more of that. Right here. There you go. You get whatever color you want, Lena. <laughs> When you're putting your, your paint on your um, plate, you probably, this paint tends to go far, so you want maybe about the size of a quarter to start with, and then if you need more, you just go right ahead and add that on there. And I'm going to leave that darker blue up there at the top. Does it need to be a pretty straight line? It so doesn't need to be. I mean, if you have a, if you're along the beach on a calm day, you can go ahead and add some waves in there. We're just making it look kind of like a calm, peaceful day along there. That's looking awesome. You, Thank you. yours. Can I add a little more green. Yeah, yeah yours is starting. You're gonna want to spread them together. I would use some of this turquoise blue right here a lot more. Like, I would mm -hmm. take this turquoise blue right here. And just put it right along the top. Ooh, okay. And um, and then you're gonna blend it down. You see how we're blending that down? That looks and good. And it gives it dimension, doesn't right. it? Right. And you're gonna take a little bit more of that and put some more in there because you're gonna need it right down in here. Ooh, so it makes go, it look real. Go ahead and, and spread that out a little bit more. Turn your brush, your your flat brush. You're gonna turn it sideways, like this. Okay. Okay. You're looking good. Okay. Don't you don't want to. You don't want to blend it in too much. Wow, that looks. I feel like I need a little more like I green. I think you need green, yes. Go ahead and add that, that. one. Mm -hmm. and you just need, you need a lot more than that. You just start kind of blending it like this. Yes, but you need a lot more. Okay. <laughs> there you go. See, I gotta be bold. Be bold. <laughs> Get that color on there. Ooh, that does look good. Doesn't that look good? Very good. Wow, it's yeah. it's hard when you're not used to painting. You haven't done this before. It, you right. feel very timid. 
very. It's okay. Just go ahead and slap that paint on there. Okay, and so then we're going to put. Um, you good? Yeah. Okay. Then we're going to go ahead and go back to the sky blue here. And we're going to add some of that up at the top with the sky blue and probably a little bit of yellow. And do you see the lighter blue over there, honey? Oh, it's right in front of me. Duh. Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. sorry. So the sky now? <sighs> yeah, we're going to go ahead and do the sky with some of this light blue right here. You're welcome to share mine. Thank you. Okay. Those of you at home watching are not able to share mine, and I'm sorry about that. I'll, I'll mail I'll mail a few some in a kit. Okay, so we're adding some of the sky blue in here. And we are not going to want that to be a solid color blue either, so we're going to add some white here shortly. Let's just get that covered up there. Like for clouds? Mm -hmm. Clouds, are you, if you look at the sky, even if you don't see clouds, it's not going to look totally, like usually not a solid blue. It's so, it feels so odd that we're covering up our little... I know, we're, little, and, what and is, yeah, our little our friend, flamingo. Our flamingo, yes. Yeah. Oh my goodness, look what I did. I. It's all right, you know, you have those colors in, in the sky. You do. Yes, Elena just accidentally added some pink, and that's oh, okay. okay. You're right. It, it'll blend right in, or, you know, if she really hates it, she can always go back again and... Um, Give it a, a few minutes to dry, and then she can go back again and just cover that pink up right there if she doesn't like that. We're really flexible around here. <laughs> Makes me want to go to the beach. Doesn't it? What beach is your favorite beach? You know what? I have to say I think it's Pensacola Beach, which I know is not a fancy beach at all, but it has like white sugar sand. Oh yeah. So pretty. And it's um, not real crowded. I just it's wanna, beautiful. You finished telling me about the beach. I just want to point out one thing here. When you do where the sky meets the water, when you're doing the water, you're doing the sand, you're going to turn your brush so it's wide and it covers a lot more area quicker. When you go up to where it's going to meet your water, you're going to take your brush and you're going to turn it sideways like this. And that'll give you a nice straighter edge with a little bit more control and coverage there. And in just a second, we're going to add in some white. We're just going through this blue like crazy. See, I got some pink in mine now too, Lena. It looks good though, Debbie. Yeah, it does. I feel like little girls would like this like for their room because it's just happy colors, don't you think? It is. But you know, one of my husband's favorite animals is a pink flamingo. Really? Yeah. See, I like that. So here we go. We're going to add a little bit of white in there. While it's still wet, remember, um, if you've listened to me before, we're painting with acrylics, and acrylics can dry fast. So if you're wanting to blend some of those colors in there, you can't be too slow or it's going to start to dry. And so if it starts to dry, then you're going to go ahead you can dab in a little bit more water in there to help the brush um, go across the canvas more smoothly. So we have our sky, we have our water, we have our sand. Okay. We're going to take a break right here. here. Mine doesn't look nearly scary. It's because your brush is getting too dry. So let me just show you. If you're sitting with me, this is not to point out that Lena is a terrible painter. But I want to just show you the difference and, and to explain to you why it looks like that. If you're looking at mine, my sky looks much smoother and the colors are blended together. If you look at Lena's, we're gonna, I'm going to help her fix this because she's not really painted before. You can see it kind of is starting to look like it's not completely painted. The colors are kind of looking like they're dry brushing, really dry paint on there. And sometimes you want a dry brush look, but this is not one of those times. So what Lena really needs to do is she's going to go back in here with some of those same colors again and she's going to add a little bit more water to that and help it blend more. So get my brush. You're right, because so, I have not gotten my brush wet, I think, since we started. Yeah, and you don't want the brush to be too sopping wet. So when you take your brush out of there, you rinse off that last color you did. Just take that brush out of there, swish it around a bit. 
and then you're just going to dab it carefully. You, just, you want some of that water to be in there, but you don't want so much that it's going to just slop all over your painting. Is that good? That's not bad. Now you want to blend that down. So you, just kind of go. Once you do the line, you're going to turn it the other way flat, and you're going to blend it across. Like this, or like this? Okay. Yes, yes. And as it goes over the bottom, when you you get out your flower stencil, this one accidentally got cut off. There's actually other petals over here, and what you're going to do is um, we're going to go ahead and put that just right here in the corner, right there. Part of the flower is actually going to go off. And then we're going to take our round brush. Lena's trying to help me, but she doesn't know what I'm doing. So here's our round brush. You can see that the, the tip of it is not flat and straight across. So we're going to go ahead and take our round brush. We're going to dip it right in that dark hot pink. We are going to take our flower and we're going to trace right around the edge of our stencil. So remember when I said if you drew it in pencil, it's going to get, I guess it's going to get covered up. So this is just uh, an easier way to do it. Just cut, paint right around your stencil. Just trace around with your, your round brush. And you just not, your line doesn't have to be perfect yet because you're going to be going back and, and filling that in. And I don't have a, uh, that petal over here for my other stencil, but that's okay. I know about where it goes and I'll just add that petal right there. And then another one down here, this is my hibiscus flower. And then my last petal right here. Your petal shapes do not need to all be the same shape. Kind of makes me think of SpongeBob. He always has those flowers. Um, in bikini bottom. <laughs> okay, and then I'm going to paint this little stem that's going to come off here. Okay, so set my stencil aside and I got my basic outline. I'm going to go ahead and do an upside down U right here at the, the very, uh, where the petals start. And then I'm going to go ahead and start coloring in, painting in some of that petal there. Now this part you can use your flat brush or you can use your round brush. The round brush is just easier in general probably to trace with when you're needing to trace it, the edges. And we don't want to go, we're not going to paint right into these little areas right here. These upside down U's yet because we're going to go ahead and add some other color up there so that stands out. Elena's super impressed with her sky. Mm -hmm. We're going to show that to you. It actually looks like a real sky. We'll show that to you in just a bit. But you know what? It showed me that it can be corrected. Like, I made some mistakes, but it wasn't like I had to start all over. Right, so it wasn't devastating? No, it was like, you yes. can fix this. You can <laughs> fix it. If you've not painted before, you can do this. Yep. It's really fun. This is really fun to do with your friends or your family. If, um, if you're able to get together, you might want to... Um, if you have to do this whole social distancing and need to be outside, or um, if you're able to be inside, if you have a big enough area, um, you can also do like uh, one of these media platforms like Skype or Facebook Messenger or Zoom if you want to be able to hang out with your friends but you're not actually able to physically be together. And that way you get to do something and hang out and socialize. Okay. So, right there on the main part of our flower, we used that dark pink. And then we're going to go in with um, some of our coral color and our lighter pink. So, let's start with our coral. 
right there. And we can go ahead and do the inside. And if it blends together like this, that's all right. That kind of looks neat. The paint is still wet. It just adds some dimension to your painting. You feel okay there? I'm thinking I might have to do a little bit of fixing, but... That's right. Look, look, you just do this. Ready? Just take your brush and you just do a, a curve. And then just come to the other side and do the curve. And it's okay. This will, like I said before, um, you can always come back and go back over it. We're going to add some more highlights to this flower in a minute. Yeah, I like it when mm -hmm. the colors blend a little bit. Yeah. So we're going to go up to our petal up here. Put maybe some of that peach in there. You can also add a little bit of a, a lighter pink. Just to highlight the edges right there. I'm highlighting this side and the top area because on the other side I'm going to just kind of, I'm going to add some black later. It um, gives it, defines the shape a little bit more and it also um, gives it a little bit of a look like it's, there's a, the sun's coming on it and there's, so there's shading on one side and there's, the light is reflecting on the other side. Yeah. Do so, I do it on each of them? Yep, yeah, but right here you're going to want to blend it just a little bit more. So on the side that is facing up to where the sun would be, those are the sides you're going to highlight. And we're going to come back and highlight that more in just a minute. Just let that dry just a little bit. And I'm going to get my flamingo out. I can find where he's hiding. Oh, do you have one? Oh, okay. So we're going to do the flamingo the same way. We're going to go ahead and lay him over top, position him where we want to. He's going to be a little off center right over here. And we're going to outline him the same way we did with the flower, with our round brush and our hot pink. And if you're leaning over this way, be careful that you do not stick your arm, especially if you're wearing a long sleeve shirt, you don't want to stick that in that wet paint on the flower. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start outlining him with pink. Make sure you hold him down so he doesn't move. And if for some reason you're a little bit messy and you get that arm in the paint, you get something on your clothes and you really didn't want to do that, you can always use spray and wash. It is will become your best friend. Spray and wash does an amazing job getting out, but you have to do it as soon as you get home or as quicker quicker you can throw that right there into the into the washing machine the better. I love these colors. Aren't they pretty? Yeah. And you do not need to be a girl to paint this. Pink flamingos are also come in boys. All flamingos are, are pink like this. And so if you see a pink flamingo, it's not just a girl flamingo. <laughs> My family always has been going to North Carolina Outer Banks forever. It's just really beautiful there. and. They make it so easy to be able to get a place there and stay somewhere. Okay, I'm almost done with my flamingo. Just got to get the head on there. And then I'm going to go ahead and paint him all in. This doesn't take long, does it? No, it's not. Been, and yeah, look at you. I mean, it, but you, it's just, it just feels so good. I mean, I just. You're having fun? Mm-hmm. Cool. That was the point of this whole thing. Yeah, it's really fun. Some of my students have been painting on their walls, their bedroom walls. Oh. Because they're bored, they miss my class. Oh, that's funny. Or are they painting 
not just like a solid color. They're like painting. They're like landscapes, artwork. yeah. Oh, very fun. Yeah, one of them painted landscape, and her mom sent me a picture. So if you're watching this and you want to paint your room on like landscape or something else, uh, please make sure that you are either the owner of the house <laughs> or you have asked for permission and have gotten a yes. Okay. I don't want anybody calling me saying, Miss Chris said I could paint my room. Okay, so there's the basic outline. We're going to go ahead and fill it in. And I didn't cut out the centerpiece right here for my flamingo. Um, I just cut because that would just, that could be difficult. I have the general idea with the lines right here, and I can just go ahead and fill it in. See, it's really important to keep this in the same spot, right? It's like stencil. Yep. yep, you don't want to move your stencil if you're still over there uh, painting with it. If you move it, it's going to be, it might be a little bit difficult to see what you're doing. You might end up with a very fat painting. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. But again, if you do that, it is very fixable. This part where you fill it in, you might want to go ahead and use your flat brush. I'm just using my round brush here, but a flat brush will cover the area much faster. And you may hear it right now. We have a fan blowing in the background. It's blowing on us, so it's kind of nice because it's a little hot in here. But it also, um, it can be helpful because those areas that you're waiting for the paint to dry for like right here, because I'm going to add some more highlights in here, it dries that so that it's ready to put down the next color. Or if you're trying to blend colors, it may not be a good thing and you'll have to turn your fan off for a short time because you need that paint to stay wet to be able to blend it. That looks good. Mm -hmm. It looks good, Lana. Yeah. It's certainly not perfect, but no. I guess that's okay. You just that's color okay. in. Right. Yep. Color them in. Color them in with that hot pink and we're going to go back again and add some highlights here shortly. We actually had a flamingo on our wedding invitation. Oh, you did? Yep. Because my husband loves flamingos. They are pretty. I mean, think about it. I mean, it's kind of cool. A pink bird. Yep. You could actually, um, you could take a hot glue gun and glue a ribbon or some of that twine rope on the back of this, and you could hang it up like that. Oh, that you don't even need to frame good. it. Yes, that would look good, wouldn't it? Yep. You could do a mural at someone's house of, um, on their wall. Have I? Um, didn't you have Lightning McQueen back in, remember? Oh, yes, 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 I did uh, cars. I bet they loved it. I think they did. How long did that take? Um, it took a few days, and I had help. <laughs> it turned out looking really nice. The kids and the family got to help me, so they got to be a part of that. And it was for their their baby brother, who at the time when I started it had not been born yet. Uh -huh. Okay, my my his leg is a little fat there. Okay, I'm going what to helps is that I can tell we're gonna probably come in with different colors to kind of help that oh, it, it yeah. doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Yeah. I'm going to take my flat brush here, a smaller flat brush, right there, and I'm going to go ahead and add some, some other highlights in this, some white, and some of this peach color here, and lighter pink. This is really fun. I mean, it looks, I think, I don't know, it's kind of like you also introduced me to um, the coloring, you know, the adult coloring books, and it just, that was fun too. It's just like all these, it just feels Those good getting things. something finished in yeah. the finished project. I'm just going to make some zigzags over here. This is still a little wet, and that's okay. We're just going to make some zigzags over here like it's their wing. Mm 
And we'll just highlight their head a little bit. Using the flat brush for that? Yeah. Because I'm kind of blending some colors in a little bit. But I'm also going to highlight, go back a little bit and highlight things. I'm using, I'm going back and forth between like the light pink and some of that salmon color. And white? I'm going to do white last. Oops, I didn't want to do one there. So you're doing these two colors? Yeah, probably mostly the salmon. Can you see what I'm doing? Is there, there's salmon there? Can you pass me that little bit? Oh my gosh. Is that, 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 that. Oh, yeah, yeah. That way, so I don't use out. Oh, go ahead. You can put it around top of it. I'm taking some of your pink because I've run out. Look how good all that looks, though. I know. Okay, so you're doing mainly. I'm, I have that dark pink on there first, and then I'm going back in with some of my lighter colors. And I'm just adding some dimension, blending some of the other lighter colors in first and then I'm going to go back with my um, white and my black and just highlight different parts of my flamingo. Don't be afraid to just take that brush and swoop it right around. Okay, I'm always so, I don't know, I'm just always kind of hesitant. I know, it, it's hard. It's going to be hard if you're not used to doing that. It's alright. It doesn't have to be blended and be perfect. Now I'm going to take a little bit of my light pink and my salmon color. I'm going to go ahead and paint that beacon right there. So the tip of the beak is going to be black, but then we're going to have some of that pink in there. In just a minute, I'll show you. really good. It's looking amazing. Okay, so I'm going to give that... I know, you're doing... I didn't think it would look this good. You're doing really well. I'm going to post it all over Facebook. Look what you did. <laughs> it's the best thing in the world to hear when somebody leaves your class and they say, I think this is the best thing I've ever painted. Oh, it... And I bet you it feels well, great for whoever's able to say that. I just think it just makes you think, oh, I can't believe I'm doing this. I know. Okay, so we're going to, uh, we're letting some of that dry here. We're Again, we're going to go back and we're going to highlight some things in black and white. Um, we're going to add a little bit of grass down here in the corner. You can add other things, like if you want to add a seagull up here, let's see, and you want to do one of those M things, add just a little bit of interest up here. Oops, got a little blobs coming off of my brush. You can add a seagull. Just make like a McDonald's almost arches. Oh, oh, kind of a little dot right there. Now you don't need a lot of detail. And uh, you might want to add a couple in there. Or maybe they're pel those pelicans. I love watching the pelicans go after the fish. Okay. So we've just added just a couple up here, seagulls. Down in this bottom corner, we're going to start with a darker green. And I'm going to show you how to take, you're going to take your round brush that is not flat and straight on the edge, and you're going to dip it in that dark green. 
and you're going to start at the bottom here in this corner you're going to press down and you're going to go up lift your brush up a little bit as you come off the end of it and it's going to make it look like grass and you can overlay it you can let lap do several over crisscross each other When you push down, if you need to practice this on another piece of paper or something else you have, that's fine. Newspaper, because you're going to be kind of pressing down here at the bottom and then lifting up as you go towards the edge of it. How you doing? Oh, that I have good. some too. Yeah. Okay. It looks like that seagrass you see when you go to the beach. Mm -hmm. And we, we start with the, the dark green here to begin with, and then we're going to go in over top of that. And we're going to add some lighter greens and possibly a little bit of that yellow. So here's a go to my next one. Let's see. I'm going to wipe off my brush. I'm not going to dip it in the water right now because it is just going to a different shade of green. Going in there with my light green and go over top of that. This is kind of a quick thing to do here. And you start to see that it adds some dimension to that. That looks good. And let's see. I might just add just a touch bit of a Take my yellow and just mix that in with a little bit of my green and see if I can get that to kind of just add a little bit of that yellow green in there. There's a nice color going on there. Looks good. You like it? I do. Mine are a little bit thicker stems. Oh, that's all right. It looks good. Yours looks good. Okay, so we're going to go now into back to our hibiscus. And we're going to lighten up the center a little bit with this cream color. There you go. I'm not using straight white, although you, you can. I'm going to go back in with some a little bit of white to highlight some areas here in just a second. And I'm going to take my... Can I use that? Oh, mm -hmm. No, no. Yeah, it's a brown. Or you need it here. This one. I want to use my little flat brush. Again, you can use whatever one is most comfortable with you, for you. So, I had that coral down here. I'm going to kind of add some of this cream in here. I'm just going to do it loosely. I'm doing like those upside down, you can think about it as like a U or upside down U, depending on which way you're having to turn your brush. And that'll kind of give you that nice brush stroke. And you can see some of that pink is being pulled and swirled around in there. And let's see. And now that my pink has dried a little bit, I'm going to go. Um, my dark pink's dried. I'm going to go back in here a little bit with this, this coral color. And I'm just highlighting, like I said, where the light's going to be shining on that. Go ahead, you can go ahead and let some of that color smear together. a little bit of that pink in here, so I'm going to kind of add some of that back in there. there
How you doing there, Lena? I'm doing okay. Good, good. Are you doing white? This is, is a cream color. Cream? Yeah, yeah. It looks white, I think, because my paint is so dark pink. Okay, so I'm gonna stop with that at the moment, and then I'm gonna um, jump around a little bit. So I'm gonna go back up to my flamingo while this is drying a little bit more, and I'm gonna take my black and I'm gonna start outlining my flamingo. And I'm not gonna put. A, we'll start with a beak right here. So we're gonna draw a line. Right here, across with the beak, and the tip of his nose is going to be black. And he's going to come up here. And then it's got a line on the beak that comes across just like that. Looks like a T, capital T. And we're gonna put the eye right about here. Just a dot like this. We're gonna let that dry for a minute because we're gonna go back there in just a few minutes and add a little white dot in that. And just so in some of the areas, just I'm gonna go ahead and just give it a little bit more detail make it pop a little bit more just with black line in just some of the areas. If you want to outline your flamingo all in black, you can do that. I'm not doing that right now though. Accenting that wing a little bit there. Okay, let's get the tail. And you don't have to go right along the pink. I'm actually letting some of that pink uh, stand out just a little bit. And when you're doing outlining like this, it's um, it's going to be easier to do if your paint is not too dry. If it's not flowing well, it means that your paint is too dry and you might need to just add a touch bit of water to that. Let's see. And I'm just going to add a couple of little, just little black dots over here. I don't know why. It just looks interesting. And then we're going to go over to our hibiscus. And we're going to add some of those same kind of outlines. Now there is a way to cheat at this a little bit if you are, if you have trouble having a really steady hand. Um, if you're trying to do some of these outlines and your your hand is a little too shaky, um, 
there is one kind of little cheat that you could always do and you can get a black sharpie and um, and outline it with that my hands are not always steady enough That's looking good. What do you think? I think I, I think it's okay. Sometimes my black line is a little thick, but I'm thinking once I start getting some white in there, it's gonna help it. Yeah. Kind of soften it a little bit. Yeah. Are you using a um, brown brush? I think okay. yeah, but my hand may just be a little heavy. Yeah, and that's that just takes some practice. You want a smaller round brush? It might make it easier. Let's see. Try that one right there. Sometimes it is all about the brush. Yeah, so if you're painting and you feel like it's not quite, it's feeling uncomfortable. It's feeling like it's not, it's not, you're not in as, as much control over your brush as you would like. It's okay to stop. Try another brush. Yeah, Do a this sample. Is, this is a lot better. See there? It's a much finer line. Yeah. It gives you a little bit more control. Get comfortable with your brush. If you need to get a piece of paper, like I said before, grab that piece of paper, try a couple different brushes, see which one is most comfortable in your hand. before you just start thinking you're a terrible painter, <laughs> it might just be the brush. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put a few just little dots in here. Almost done. We're going to add some, just go back with a little bit of white. I'm probably going to go for the white. I'm probably going to go back with my my smaller flat brush again. Right there. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and dip it in that white. And Just some little white streaks here. It's looking really good. I think we're almost done. Yours too. Okay, so we're going to take a look at both of our paintings together. Lana and I just finished ours. She, hers turned out awesome. Thank you. And Lena is not somebody who has done a lot of painting before. Really so not. it's very obvious that if Lena can do this, you can too. Because <laughs> <laughs> it turned out really cool, really awesome. Very fun, very fun. Thank you for joining me in painting. And we'll hope to see you again. <laughs>